listening to the Holy Bible One Year Challenge with master storyteller Michael Wood, featuring the easy to read version and used by permission from Bible Week International. Enjoy the show! Hello, everyone. Welcome to day 178. We're continuing in the book of 1 Kings, and we get this awesome showdown between God's one and only prophet. The other prophets are all dead. So the sole survivor, Elijah, decides to stand against 450 prophets of Baal. It's not just Elijah versus the prophets. This is God against God, the God of Israel against Baal. And we are also continuing in the book of Acts. Paul and Silas are deep in non-Jewish territory where people worship a whole pantheon of gods. In fact, Paul comes across a God that just has a nameplate. It says, altar to the unknown God. They have a God for everything, even the unknown. So when given the floor, what could Paul possibly say to persuade them to follow Christ? If you were in that position, what would you say to the people who worship a whole pantheon of gods? If you enjoy the show, visit me at patreon.com forward slash story master. You'll find the link in the description box below. By contributing as little as $1 per month, you will enable me to continue this ministry and you'll get cool rewards too. Together, we're going to get through the Bible in one year. Let's get started. 1 Kings chapter 18, verses 16 to 46. So Obadiah went to King Ahab and told him where Elijah was. King Ahab went to meet Elijah. When Ahab saw Elijah, he said, Is that really you, the troublemaker of Israel? Elijah answered, I have not made trouble for Israel. You and your father's family caused all the problems when you stopped obeying the Lord's commands and began following the false gods. Now, tell all the people of Israel to meet me at Mount Carmel and bring the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of the goddess Asherah who got their support from Queen Jezebel. So Ahab called all the Israelites and those prophets to Mount Carmel. Elijah came to all the people and said, You must decide what you are going to do. How long will you keep jumping from one side to the other? If the Lord is the true God, follow him. But if Baal is the true God, then follow him. The people said nothing. So Elijah said, I am the only prophet of the Lord here, but there are 450 prophets of Baal. So bring us two bulls. Let the prophets of Baal have one bull. Let them kill it, cut it into pieces, then put the meat on the wood. But don't start the fire. I will do the same with the other bull, and I will not start the fire either. Prophets of Baal, pray to your God, and I will pray to the Lord. Whichever God answers the prayer and starts the fire is the true God. All the people agreed that this was a good idea. Then Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, There are many of you, so you go first. Choose a bull and prepare it but don't start your fire. So the prophets took the bull that was given to them and prepared it. They started praying to Baal and prayed until noon. They said, Baal, please answer us. There was no sound. No one answered. Then they began jumping around on the altar they had built at noon. Elijah began to make fun of them. He said, If you are sure Baal is really a god, maybe you should pray louder. 
Maybe he's busy thinking about something. Or, or he's in the bathroom. <laughs> Perhaps he took a trip somewhere. Or he could be sleeping. So you may need to wake him up. So the prophets prayed louder. They cut themselves with swords and spears, as was their way of worshiping. They cut themselves until they were bleeding all over. The afternoon passed, but the fire still had not started. The prophets were out of control and continued to act this way until the time came for the evening sacrifice. But nothing happened. There was no answer from Baal. There was no sound. There was no one listening. Then Elijah said to all the people, Now, come here. So they gathered around Elijah. The Lord's altar had been torn down, so Elijah repaired it. Elijah found 12 stones. There was one stone for each of the 12 tribes. These 12 tribes were named for the 12 sons of Jacob, the man who the Lord had named Israel. Elijah used these stones to repair the altar to honor the Lord. He dug a small ditch around the altar. It was wide enough and deep enough to hold about 14 liters of water. Then Elijah put the wood on the altar. He cut the bull into pieces and laid the pieces on the wood. Then he said, Fill four jars with water. Pour the water on the pieces of meat and on the wood. Then Elijah said, oh, uh, Do it again. Then he said, Do it a third time. The water ran down off the altar and filled the ditch. At about the time for the evening sacrifice, the prophet Elijah approached the altar and prayed, Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I ask you now to prove that you are the God of Israel and that I am your servant. Show these people that it was you who commanded me to do all these things. Lord, answer my prayer. Show these people that you, Lord, are God and that you are the one who is bringing them back to you. Then fire came down from the Lord and burn the sacrifice, the wood, the stones, and the ground around the altar. Then it dried up all the water in the ditch. All the people saw this happen and bowed down to the ground and began saying, The Lord is God! The Lord is God! Then Elijah said, Get the prophets of Baal! Uh, don't let any of them escape! So the people captured all the prophets. Then Elijah led them down to Kishon Creek and killed them all. Then Elijah said to King Ahab, Now go, eat and drink. A heavy rain is coming. So King Ahab went to eat. At the same time, Elijah climbed to the top of Mount Carmel. At the top of the mountain, Elijah bent down put his head between his knees. Then Elijah said to a servant, Go up higher and look towards the she. The servant went and looked. He came back and said, I saw nothing. Elijah told him to go and look again. This happened seven times. The seventh time the servant came back and said, I saw a small cloud the size of a man's fist that was coming in from the sea. Elijah told the servant, Go and tell King Ahab to get his chariot ready and to go home now. If he does not leave now, the rain will stop him. After a short time, the sky was covered with dark clouds. The wind began to blow and a heavy rain began to fall. Ahab got into his chariot and started back to Jezreel. The power of the Lord came to Elijah. He used his belt to hold up the bottom of his robe away from his feet. Then he ran ahead of King Ahab all the way to Jezreel. 1 Kings chapter 19 Elijah at Mount Horeb, otherwise known as 
Mount Sinai. King Ahab told Jezebel everything that Elijah had done and how Elijah had killed all the prophets of Baal with a sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah and said, I swear that by this time tomorrow, you will be just as dead as those prophets. If I don't succeed, may the gods do the same or worse to me. When Elijah heard this, he was afraid. So he ran away to save his life. He took his servant with him and they went to Beersheba in Judah. Then Elijah left his servant in Beersheba and walked all day into the desert. And he sat down under a bush and asked to die. He said, I have had enough, Lord. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then Elijah lay down under the bush and went to sleep. An angel came to him and touched him. The angel said, Get up and eat. Elijah looked around and by his head there was a cake that had been baked over coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then went back to sleep. Later the angel of the Lord came to him again, touched him and said, Get up and eat. If you don't, you will not be strong enough to make the long journey. So Elijah got up. He ate and drank and felt strong. Then Elijah walked for 40 days and nights to Mount Horeb, the mountain of God. There Elijah went into a cave and spent the night. Then the Lord said to him, Elijah, why are you here? Elijah answered, Lord God, all powerful, I have always served you the best I can. But the Israelites have broken their agreement with you. They have destroyed your altars and killed your prophets. I am the only prophet left alive. And now they are trying to kill me. Then the Lord said to Elijah, Go out and stand in front of me on the mountain. I, the Lord, will pass by you. Then a very strong wind blew. The wind caused the mountains to break apart. It broke large rocks in front of the Lord. But that wind was not the Lord. After the wind, there was an earthquake. But that earthquake was not the Lord. After the earthquake, there was a fire. But that fire was not the Lord. After the fire, there was a quiet, gentle voice. When Elijah heard the voice, he used his coat to cover his face and went to the entrance of the cave and stood there. Then a voice said to him, Elijah, why are you here? Elijah said, Lord God, all powerful, I have always served you the best I can. But the Israelites broke their agreement with you. They destroyed your altars and killed your prophets. I am the only prophet left alive. And now they are trying to kill me. The Lord said, Go back. Take the road that leads to the desert around Damascus. Go into Damascus and anoint Hazel as king over Aram. Then anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. Next, anoint Elisha, son of Sephat, from Abel Maholah. He will be the prophet who takes your place. Jehu will kill anyone who escapes Hazel's sword, and Elisha will kill anyone who escapes from Jehu's sword. I still have 7,000 people in Israel who have never bowed down to Baal or kissed that idol. So Elijah left that place and went to find Elisha, son of Shaphat. Elisha was plowing a field with a team of oxen. He had 11 other men in front of him, each plowing with one of his teams of oxen. Elijah went to Elisha and put his coat on Elisha. Elisha immediately left his oxen and ran after Elijah. Elisha said, 
Let me kiss my mother and father goodbye. Then I will follow you. Elijah answered, You can do that. Uh, I will not stop you. Elisha turned away from him and went back. He killed the oxen and used the yoke for firewood. He boiled the meat, gave it to the people, and they all ate together. Then Elisha went to follow Elijah, and he became his help. Acts chapter 17, verses 22 to 34. Then Paul stood up before the meeting of the Areopagus council and said, Men of Athens, everything I see here tells me you are very religious. I was going through your city and I saw the things you worship. I found an altar that had these words written on it, To an unknown God. You worship a God that you don't know. This is the God I want to tell you about. He is the God who made the whole world and everything in it. He is the Lord of the land and the sky. He does not live in temples built by human hands. He is the one who gives people life. He does not need any help from them. He has everything he needs. God began by making one man, and from him he made all the different nations to cover the whole earth. He decided exactly when and where they would live. God wanted people to look for him, and perhaps in searching all around for him, they will find him. But he is not far away from any of us. It is through him that we are able to live, to do what we do, and to be who we are. As your own poets have said, we also are his children. That's right, we all come from God. So we must not think that he is like something people imagine or make. He is not made of gold, silver, or stone. In the past, people did not understand God, and he overlooked this. But now, he is telling everyone in the world to change and turn to him. He has decided on a day when he will judge all the people in the world in a way that is fair. To do this, he will use a man he has chosen, and he has proved to everyone that this is the man to do it. He proved it by raising him from death. When the people heard about a man being raised from death, some of them laughed, but others said, we will hear more about this from you later. So Paul left the council meeting. But some of the people joined with Paul and became believers. Among those were Dionysus, a member of the Areopagus council, a woman named Damaris, and some others. Acts chapter 18, verses 1 through 8. Paul and Corinth. Later, Paul left Athens and went to the city of Corinth. There he met a Jewish man named Aquila, who was born in Pontus. But he and his wife Priscilla had recently moved to Corinth from Italy. They left Italy because Claudius had given an order for all Jews to leave Rome. Paul went to visit Aquila and Priscilla. They were tent makers, the same as Paul. So he stayed with them and worked with them. Every Sabbath day, Paul went to the synagogue and talked with both Jews and Greeks, trying to persuade them to believe in Jesus. But after Silas and Timothy came from Macedonia, Paul spent all his time telling God's message to the Jews, trying to convince them that Jesus is the Messiah. But they disagreed with what Paul was teaching and started insulting him. So Paul shook the dust from his clothes. He said to them, If you are not saved, it will be your own fault. I have done all I can do. After this, I will go only to the non-Jewish people. Paul left the synagogue and moved into the home of Titius Justus, a man who was a worshiper of the true God. His house was next to the synagogue. Crispus was the leader of that synagogue. He and all the people living in his house believed in the Lord Jesus. Many other people in Corinth also listened to Paul. They too believed. 
and we're baptized. Psalm chapter 78, verses 17 to 31. But they continued singing against him. They rebelled against God most high in the desert. Then they decided to test God by telling him to give them the food they wanted. They complained about it and said, Can God give us food in the desert? Yeah, he struck the rock and a flood of water came out, but can he give us bread and meat? The Lord heard what they said. He became angry with Jacob's people. He was angry with Israel because they did not trust in him. They did not believe that God could save them. But then God commanded the clouds to part like doors opening in the sky, and he poured down manna for them to eat. He gave them grain coming down from heaven. So they ate the food of angels. God sent them all that they could eat. He sent a strong wind from the east, and by his power, he made the south wind blow. He made quail fall like rain until they covered the ground. So many birds that they were like sand on the seashore. The birds fell in the middle of the camp, all around their tents. The people ate until they were full. God had given them what they wanted. But before they were fully satisfied, while the food was still in their mouths, God became angry and killed even the strongest of them. He brought down Israel's best young men. Thank you, everyone. That was day 178. Join us for day 179 for continuing in the book of 1 Kings. You'll hear about King Ben-Hadad of Aram gathering his army. And along with them are 32 kings. And he's going directly against King Ahab of Israel with the words, Your silver and your gold are mine, and so are the best of your wives and children. How will King Ahab of Israel respond to these threats. And in chapter 21, you'll hear about a vineyard owned by Naboth. And King Ahab wants the vineyard really badly, but Naboth doesn't want to give it up. So Jezebel gets involved and writes a letter. And in the book of Acts, the Jews are gathering against Paul, and they bring him to the governor of Gallio. Then Paul returns to Antioch and stays with the believers. And he journeys on to Ephesus, and he asks the followers there if they have received the Holy Spirit when they believed in the Lord. And the followers respond to Paul, We've never even heard of a Holy Spirit. You'll have to see what Paul does about this. We hope you enjoyed today's verses. Be sure to leave us a positive review and to share this podcast with your friends and family. Please join us for the next episode as we experience the Bible in one year. Did you know we offer online courses in creative writing, literature, and web design? Visit us at storymaster.online to learn more.